This video is intended to follow a specific playlist, quasi-crystals, 3D quantum pixelation, and platonic solids um, video. And so, let's just get into it, that they're not talking about Nima, Arkani, Hamed, and Jaroslav Trunka. Um, these guys, they have revolutionized science. They've proven that what they're saying is basically the thinking that led up to their discovery was is that every single um, particle reaction from the Feynman diagrams um, has been actually solved in that it, it, we've actually hacked the Feynman diagrams. That means we know exactly what shape corresponds to all of reality. Just like they were saying, there's basically a god particle. What does it look like? That's the question they were asking in the movie. The little, and I love the the camera angles, the cinematography, everything in there. The director was really good. The actress in there was awesome. It was an excellent little piece. But they're just missing the main huge discovery that happened in Caltech University in 2013. So you got Neymar Kani Hamed, Yaroslav Trunka, hacking the Feynman diagrams, revolutionizing science, showing that every single particle reaction corresponds to one shape, one, and that's called the amplitudehedron, and the other term is positive Grassmannian, and um, it's it both terms actually are for the same shape. So you're looking at, um, go look it up on Google, what the amplitude hedron looks like. It goes up in amplitudes in sevenfold, technically eightfold symmetry, which would explain everything, the golden ratio, everything, all the constants in physics. It would explain, it does explain all of those things and more, like how time is fragmented and the free will principle that they were talking about can actually be corresponded to the multiverse theory that the M theory goes hand in hand with this understanding this new understanding of time and there's a scientist Dewey B. Larson and he has a website reciprocalsystems.com and that's where you can actually research on your own that time is actually three-dimensional. That you can travel through time as a wave form. And there's a fifth stage of matter. You got liquid, solid, gas, uh, plasma, and then microclusters. Microclusters, when you have, uh, for example, microcluster iridium, and you heat it up to 850 degrees, it disappears from physical observation. And... Um, when it you, when it disappears from physical observation, what Dewey B. Larson's model shows is that the actual particle is scattered through time. It's three dimensional, in that when a wave in our dimension, where it's three dimensional space and one dimensional time, um, when we see that aspect of the iridium, it appears as though it's just it's it's not in one position it's basically this quantum uncertainty principle they're uncertain about where a given photon uh, is at any given time and that's what all matter is based off of is light is photons and it's sort of a liquid um, universe and that there's a ether and that time flows much like a river in this three-dimensional crystallized energy that we live in as this crystallized being that's made out of energy. All of your DNA uh, molecules hold 10,000 photons per molecule. So you're literally made out of light in a holographic matrix that is oriented around your free will. You move through time in the way that you want to based off of your decisions 
like I could choose not to film a YouTube video right now and my playlist wouldn't have this video in between two videos but I made the decision to do that because I've researched this for so long that there is basically a God particle and that's the amplitudehedron that's what they missed in the video and that's my main point and um, I should make it short and sweet uh, but there's there's other aspects to this um, there's free energy uh, capabilities from these quasi crystals um, and basically the aluminum and manganese one uh, specifically you can you can get a, a slight charge from it and there's there's got to be ways in physics where we can actually come up with an engine some way to harness I mean it basically is a quantum engine the way the quasi crystal is set up with the aluminum and the manganese and um, just like one video back uh, if you had didn't watch that Nobel Prize uh, laureate he won the Nobel Prize for discovering the uh, quasi crystals and so if you can get free energy from it what else can quasi crystals do well you can basically make an object um, have anti-gravitational properties like when you zap a uh, quasi crystal matrix with a specific amount of energy then more of those atoms can basically skip and be stuck sort of in and out of reality where you're basically looking at something that is partly a wave and partly a particle just like Einstein described uh, particle physics then you know wave particle wave duality that it's their wavicles that's what he called it and that there's really no atoms it's like they're not solid if you will that there there's atoms when you look at them they're um, they're just clouds of energy and with the iridium especially that shows that you know we're all basically right almost at light speed right all the atoms are almost at that light speed barrier and they're all almost able to jigger out of reality if you will that Einstein's light speed equation when you look at it it's a, a fraction and you can flip the top to the bottom right and when you hit light speed he said in the equation that you become infinitely massive, just bigger than the entire universe. Boom, you know, like, and when you look at all the particle physics, uh, you know, results in laboratories, when, like, for with the buckyballs, the um, fullerenes, when they fire those into a diffraction grating, it's just a little metal slit, and it, it's a couple nanometers wide. The buckyball is. 60 carbon atoms put together into a spherical lattice and then it's fired into the diffraction grating and it turns into a scatter plot it in into a wave basically a solid object so it just needed that little bit of a push to get into that hyperdimensional um, flux state to make the atoms turn into waves that's what makes time travel possible that's what makes this free energy, anti-gravity, all these, you know, phenomena, all these uh, scientific anomalies can actually be proven by looking uh, at these different uh, particle physics equations. Like Dewey B. Larson, you have to look at his, maybe I'll post a video of his um, in a different um, playlist like maybe a time travel playlist where I can try to explain time travel a little better but this is oriented around free energy they're basically all connected anti-gravity free energy um, teleportation time travel it's all the, basically the same thing so um, you're looking at just years of research on this there's there's lots of different clues and hints in the video like the Illuminati eye and stuff in the beginning that I noticed and little things like that that 
I mean, they, they, maybe they're not telling you guys about the amplitohedron for a reason, because that's one of the main secrets of the secret societies. Um, the Vajavarahi Mandala um, is an ancient symbol that looks exactly like the Star of David that the Buddhists would meditate to um, in their monasteries. They would hold this image of the Vajavarahi Mandala and in their mind, and they would say that they would become in, you know, infinite, that they would become the universe. They would become everything all at once. And that's kind of like what the, the physics equations are showing. The amplitohedron is one-fourth of the um, Vajavarahi Mandala, or basically a Star of David, but it's three-dimensional. It's, um, it's a three-dimensional Star of David where you have a three-sided uh, three pyramid facing up and then one facing down, and they're basically stuck inside of each other with each point going through the bottom of each other pyramid, which creates that Star of David shape. And um, the amplitohedron is the God particle, and it really, if you look at the sonoluminescence videos, the sound creating light, it sounds a lot like the Bible, right? Like we're in the beginning, you know, let there be light, but that the word created the light, right? The Aum, the, that, that tone that the Buddhists talk about, that's the shape that is created when you do the Aum, that chant. And that's why they do that chant while they're trying to hold that shape in their mind. They're trying to become that shape, literally, so that they can become the God particle, the God seed, and experience everything infinitely. And you can do meditation practices. I've done them. Um, and you just have a quartz crystal. You hold it while you're meditating, and you try to get into an altered state of consciousness. You have to get into an a alpha wave state, a brain wave state. And when you do that, your brain is more powerful. It's like when you're sleeping. Some people... Um, have out-of-body experiences when they do these things um, because you're, again, your body's made out of light. You're a light being. And when you are focusing all your energy like a laser beam, you're able to teleport parts of yourself. And that's what, actually, the third eye, actually, or the epiphysis, epiphysis gland, um, like epiphany, um, that gland in the center of your brain, the pineal gland, can actually create visual images. Go to the David Wilcock playlist and look at him talking about the um, physics of the pineal gland and how it actually works. There's these little microclusters, uh, you know, like I was talking about, the fifth stage of matter, they're called pinealocytes, and they can flip in and out of waves and solid states. So you're literally sending those those parts of yourself into time space, collecting data. Everything is information. Remember like the video before this. Everything's information. Light holds information. Quantum computing, that's what makes quantum, com quantum computing possible is that light stores data. That's what the future computers are all going to be. It's all going to be light. Uh, you know, connecting consciousness and stuff like that sounds like a dystopic movie like that that video right before this one really is a bunch of transhumanist stuff they're trying to get us to think that we're all in a simulation or something when really I mean what they're and then they said we're not allowed to look into the spiritual aspects like of science that all these scientific understandings like the amplitohedron couldn't be God don't look into that. It's it's a simulation. It's okay. So that's you know. Listen to the ancients. Look, look what the ancients had to say about it. Become one with the universe. Meditate, and um, you know, have a good day. I'm gonna give you guys another video after this one. Uh, we'll see. It'll be a surprise. We'll see what the free energy video will be next. Maybe uh, John Hutchinson.